painter friends, it's Gretchen Fleener. I'm at the Glitter Glamper today and I thought it might be cool to just give you guys a little tour of my booth. I know a lot of you have questions about just setting up fair booths in general and I thought maybe this might help give you a few ideas for things. So here's how we do things at the Glamper. So just to give you a frame of reference, this is what my booth looks like before I occupy it. So the State Fair built these cool structures we call the cages it's all steel giant doors that are hinged and you can close and lock up your booth at the end of the day which is really nice and of course it provides a roof over our heads and light and electricity and all that great framework we need without having to set up tents and things like that so my booth is 10 feet by 20 feet. As you can see, these doors hinge in the middle so you can fold them up or you can extend them all the way out. And your display can go out as far as these doors can. All right, so this is the outside of the booth, the longer 20 foot side. Half of it you can see as a fence. And then this is kind of the main entrance where people come in. Around the corner here, we have Paul and Babe photo op that gets a lot of traffic. And then the shorter side is the exit. So we, of course, remove that rope to let people out, but it really helps to control the crowd in our booth and helps us to have enough space to work. So let's take a walk back around here and enter the booth as a typical customer would. So we've got the big sign up above, arrow tells you where to order first. I've got a barbecue grill to go with the camping theme. Some postcards there that people can take. This banner kind of advertises the glamper trailer itself as an option for parties. And so it's clear that this is where you start your order. Our checkout counter, we have some beard ornaments that we sell to our glitter beard customers. Inside the display case, you can check out the unicorn and monster horns. And then on top of the counter, we have our bling book. And this is where kids can flip through the pages and choose what kind of bling they want on their design. So it's organized by price. Bling clusters are 15 and the festival faces are 20. Here's our checkout stand. We've got sanitizer, of course. And a big sign here that makes it clear uh, that people should wait at the line. Of course, we're not open yet, but when we are, we just remove this with Velcro. And people know where to start the line. The rope helps keep the line and the crowd outside of the booth, so we have room to work. This here you can see is our glitter tattoo menu and pictures of some of our festival faces. There are magnets on the edges of the doors. Examples of the bling. So when you're waiting outside, you can see what the bling itself looks like. So let me just open up my rope here and we'll take a look inside the booth. Up above, we have a giant menu banner. It has all of our offerings and prices up nice and high so nobody can block that. And it's right over our checkout. As you enter the booth, here's one of our artist stations. This is a vintage secretary desk. It's a nice spot that can fold away when we don't need it uh, and open up when we have enough business for an artist to be working here. Everybody gets a little kit with some tools that are shared, a little trash can. As you can see this year, I took advantage of all the door space to display our different menu options. These are bling to go kits. And more images over here, sparkle sleeves and bling clusters. There's our entrance to the booth. And over this artist station, I have a chandelier I made out of vintage flashlights. A huge banner with a picture of a camper on it. And then over here is a display that I built out of vintage suitcases. And you can see it's full of fun blingy things, uh, hair accessories, glue, uh, glitter, lip balm, bath bombs, headbands, um, hats, all kinds of fun things. The base cabinet I got free on the side of the road. 
So over here behind the sparkly curtain is where I tuck the vacuum cleaner to clean up that glitter at the end of the day. I've got a jukebox to play some 50s tunes as we bling people out. And this curtain here hides our little back room. I like to call this space my introvert escape room. It's a place where we can just tuck ourselves away from all the people, have a snack, check ourselves in the mirror. I've got a drop box for my artist's tickets, a place to charge all the different types of cell phones so we can take lots of pictures, liquid waste water, so our paint rinse water we dump in there. I've got a little magnet board, storage shelves up above, little trash can. We hang the schedule back here, extra masks, Friendly reminders of very important things. These are ticket jars for our artists to keep track of their sales. And an ultrasonic cleaner for stencils. There's a Keurig, of course, caffeine, crystal light, sugar, tissues, first aid, bananas. And up above, I've got binders that hold all of the extra bling clusters. As we run out, we refill with those. So just some product, chocolate, of course, the most important thing. I always try to keep a stash of snacks for my artists. We've got water, uh, stencil storage is back here as we run out. We'll come back and refill. Everybody gets a spray sanitizer lanyard if they wish. And I have lockers back here that artists can bring their own lock and store away their purses and other valuable things while they work. Down here, we've got a refrigerator, of course, more very important things, water, lunches, Gatorade, magnetic hooks hold much of the booth and banners together. I have an assortment of fun aprons that everybody can wear as they need. And I have this shoe organizer that holds all the little things that I'm always grabbing for throughout the day. Down here, we've got a broom and step stools, and that's our back room. Heading over to our checkout station, we've got a cash wrap here in this drawer just full of essential stuff. Square checkout screen where we check out our, our customers. I've got tickets up here so the artists can keep track of their own sales. There's a ticket jar for just the register as well. And then here's our counter. I've got these little tubs where people can put their ticket and the bling that they chose to bring to the artist. Down below here are some of the more popular books of bling we need to refill now and then. Horns. And back here we have a more permanent station with a vintage cabinet and countertop. This is my personal kit here. Got a sparkly backdrop with LEDs behind it that looks really cool at night. And a big light up sign. This sign hangs on the actual glamper when I use the trailer, but it looks great in the booth as well. And over here we have another sort of temporary artist station if we need three artists going. This can all fold up and be put away. Under the chair is some storage space. I sewed some covers. For the chairs so we can tuck things in there. This is a completely fold up cart station that can hold more supplies and a work surface on top. I've got another menu over here on the side of the booth, sparkly backdrop, which is great for photos. We also have a little secret exit door here. If we've got a crowded booth, we can just easily let the customers right from the chair out. So there you have it, the Glitter Glamper booth at the Minnesota State Fair. We are located in the West End Market at the fair. I hope this little tour has helped kind of give you some ideas if you're putting together a booth at a fair. It seems to evolve a little bit and change every year, but we have a lot of fun here. Thanks for visiting.